the third drill in our strict pullover series is a box pullover. And I'm gonna show you two different variations based on the height of a box that you can use. So if we take a look at my setup, I've got my bar and then I've got a taller box and I've got a shorter box, okay? We're gonna start on the taller box because the taller your box is, the easier this drill is going to be. Think about this as a continued, more challenging progression as compared to the drill that we just covered, which was our box walking pullover, right? And our box walking pullover, we had a box that was almost the completely as tall as our bar. So we were able to walk our feet all the way up towards the height of the bar, making our low bar pullover pretty simple. But now our box is getting shorter and the shorter it gets, the more challenging this becomes. So let's take a look at what the box pullover looks like and then we'll go over the step-by-step -step process and talk about the variations. All right, so there were two different pullovers using my tall box. On the first variation, you saw me start in a position with my toes on the box in a full hang. This is an important starting position because it allows me to, again, practice that strict pull-up that we need to do the full pullover. So I'm developing strength as I'm practicing the technique and the movement pattern of this skill. Super important key. Make sure you and your gymnast always start and always practice that strict pull-up to build strength. Now in the first pullover I did, after I got my chin above the bar, kind of set my non-dominant foot forward and then kicked my dominant leg to initiate that pullover and that rotation up and around my bar, okay? Going one leg at a time, again, is a little bit easier because you get some power involved. You are pushing from the non-dominant leg, the bottom leg, so that you have a little jump that you can use to actually rotate yourself to do the skill. In the second variation I did with my tall box, I kept my feet together and actually lifted my legs both at the same time to practice my pullover. That one's more challenging because we are not getting that same jump off the block. We're not getting that kicking momentum from a single leg. So have athletes start by kicking and doing a single leg pullover from this tall box and only progressing to that double leg, both leg pullover as they have the strength and the confidence to do this drill. Now when the tall box is pretty easy, guess what? We can do those same two variations on a shorter block. And now as you can see, we've got a two footer here and a one footer here. You don't have to use the same size boxes as I do. This is what we have available and this is for the sake of demonstrating different heights of blocks you can use. If you wanna go from a two foot block to maybe a foot and 10 inch block, you can. And then a block that's here, here, here. And take like 12 different steps down using 12 different heights. By all means, you can. You don't have to make a 12 inch, a humongous jump with your equipment, okay? But the idea is to continue lowering the height of the block you use so that the drill becomes more challenging and you just continue to progress more and more towards being able to do the full pullover by yourself. The step-by-step -step mechanics are the same though. You wanna go through the same modified strict pull-up with your feet on your block. You wanna use your arms, your biceps, your lats to do the majority of the pull-up, building strength, and then you can go single leg or double leg, making sure you're lifting your center of gravity, your hips, your booty, your legs, all the way, rotating them towards the full backside of the bar so you're able to easily lift your shoulders into that tall front support. 
Now when this one foot block is easy, again, continue getting lower and lower and shorter and shorter till you eventually make it all the way to the ground. That's the goal.